so this is the video lesson for 8.1 um, polar coordinates. This packet actually goes with 8.1 and 8.2, so we'll only be doing part of it in this lesson. Um, this whole lesson, chapter 8, is about polar coordinates. Um, a lot of this will seem familiar, um, considering that we spent a whole semester on trig last semester, and um, this polar coordinate system is useful in modeling circular motion, and we saw a lot of that when we did um, graphs that were sinusoidal as well. So instead of the x, y in the Cartesian or rectangular system, we will graph in terms of r, the radius, and theta, the angle measure. So it will look very similar to um, points that we used to plot, but you'll notice the main difference is that the second number will be an angle, okay? And it could be in radians, and it could be in um, degrees, okay? And we'll go back and forth between that. All right, so notice that I've kind of labeled some of the main things here, the pole, what we used to call the origin, we now call the pole. This line right here is called the polar axis, and that's where zero starts, and we go counterclockwise, just like how we did on the unit circle. So the point 2 comma 30 degrees is two units away, or the radius is two, two units away from the pole, and it's 30 degrees from zero, okay? And so if we look at the next one, Okay, notice that this R is negative 2, so let's talk about negative R. Um, we're still going to use the angle the same way, so notice that here we have this point, okay, that's the same point, I'm going ahead and give it to you, we'll practice it on our own in a minute. We have 0, the polar axis, we're going to go 210 degrees, okay, but then we're going to go in the opposite direction from the pole, you could call these polar opposites, okay, it's half a circle, it's back. So um, notice that these both ended up at the same points, and in fact, there are infinitely many coordinates. Okay, so on this, um, if you want to, you can pause the video and go ahead and label all of these. You don't have to, but it is helpful if you've labeled um, all of the main angles of the unit circle. These are all going by 15 degrees, um, and if you're thinking in terms of radian, um, they're all going in pi over 12 radians. So not everyone is labeled. I've only labeled the ones that correspond to the 30, 60, or 45 angles. Okay, so this says plot and label these points. Okay, so 2, 3 pi over 4. What I like to do is first is to locate the angle, and then I go two units away from the pole. Okay, and let's label that with an A. Okay, so next we have B. This is negative 3 pi over 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is locate pi over 3. And I'm going to go three units away, but in the opposite direction, which is really going to put me at the same thing as three, four pi over three. And so again, there's lots of different ways to write the same point. We didn't have that in rectangular, but we do have it in polar. Okay, the next one, C, negative three pi over two. Okay, so this is a negative angle. So negative angle, we actually go clockwise from the polar axis. And so that puts us up at pi over 2, and then we would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away. And so there's C. Okay, D says negative 5, 2 pi over 3. So again, I'm going to locate 2 pi over 3 right here. And I'm going to go to the opposite one, which is going to be 5 pi over 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, how do you think you could um, find this angle without having this nice pretty picture in front of you. What is the difference between 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3? The difference is pi. It's half the circle. A full circle would be 2 pi. So you could actually add pi or subtract pi when you're dealing with negative radius. Okay, so E says 1, 11 pi over 6. So 11 pi over 6 is going to be um, almost all the way around. Okay, one unit away puts us right here. And sometimes this picture gets really confusing right at the middle. It may be helpful to use a ruler sometimes on your paper, and so you can really see what's going on. Okay, and then the last one, four, or sorry, negative four, negative seven pi over six. So positive seven pi over six would be right here. Negative seven pi over six would be the opposite direction. It would be the same as five pi over six. And then actually this is a negative angle, so really what we're looking at is 11 pi over 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so a lot to combine. You might have questions, bring them to class tomorrow. 
Okay, two says find three sets of polar coordinates for the point, and they want us to stay either in one revolution forwards or one revolution backwards. Okay, I'm gonna switch up colors, and I'm gonna first plot this point, two, five pi over six. It's a pretty basic point, it's right here. Um, and you have some extra polar grids on your, um, on the back of your timeline if you want to ever use those as well. And you can Google them and find them online and things like that. So let's think about first, let's write the two and let's think about what the negative angle for 5 pi over 6 would be. And we've already actually seen this. It's negative 7 pi over 6. Okay, so that's one angle. Okay, now let's think about if we were to write the radius as negative 2. All right, so let's think about this. If I want the radius to be negative two, well, that's actually the same angle as 11 pi over six. So if I went to 11 pi over six and went backwards, I would be at that same point. And again, you can get this by adding pi, and I could also subtract pi. So let's think about um, negative two. What's another angle that puts us here? Is would be negative pi over six. We call this coterminal. So 11 pi over 6 and negative pi over 6 are coterminal. So the same thing with 5 pi over 6 and negative 7 pi over 6. So we haven't abandoned the trig. We've got to know the trig to do this chapter. Okay, so now we're going to convert between Cartesian and polar coordinates. Cartesian is x, y. Polar is r theta. And again, that theta can be in degrees or radians. So if I have this, this is my r, this is my theta. I want my x, y, and I need to find these values. So the first thing we're going to do is to graph this. Degrees. Think about over 6, that would be a 30 degree reference angle. Now if you know your special right triangles really well, you can easily fill in these sides. But let's say you're a little rusty on that, but you do remember SOHCAHTOA. Well, we just have an x value and a y value, right? Horizontal x, vertical y. So I can say that the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to x over 4. So what this gives me is that x is equal to 4 cosine of 30 degrees. And what's cosine of 30 degrees? Okay, that is uh, square root of 3 over 2. Now one thing you need to be careful about and some of you might have picked up on this, is that in the third quadrant, all students take calculus, we need to think, okay, actually this should be negative. So negative root three over two. So that simplifies to negative two root three. And it makes sense that my x value should be negative anyway. Okay, so likewise, we can do a sine on the other one, sine of 30 degrees equals y over four and in this particular problem, um, I'm also going to have a negative value because it's in the third quadrant. So I have 4 times negative 1 half. So then I have negative 2. So then my final answer, xy, would be negative 2 root 3 over negative 2. And there you go. And you can use your calculator to check on this as well. Okay. Now let's go the other way. Let's convert this xy, which is rectangular or Cartesian, to the polar form. So this time I'm wanting to find the r and the theta. And it says to round to three decimals, so this tells me I'm gonna to need to use my calculator, so go ahead and get your calculator out. Okay, I'm gonna start it the same way. I'm gonna make a graph, and this one is gonna be in the second quadrant. It's gonna be negative three and four. So this is gonna be a negative three here, this is gonna be four. And it's really nice on this particular problem because when you're trying to find r, if you get a Pythagorean triple, that makes your life easy. But um, if you don't, you would have to do negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. It won't always be a triple. You can solve this out, but hopefully you predicted that that was going to be 5. So that's the first part. Now we need to find theta. In fact, we need to find our reference angle, but then we need to figure out what it would be from the polar axis. Okay, so we're going to use trig for this again. Now we used sine and cosine earlier. We're going to use tangent now. 
tangent of that theta is going to be equal to opposite over adjacent. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave the negative out and then later on fix my angle. We've se we saw this before last semester. So when we do theta equals arctan of 4 thirds, if I were to put a negative in here, it would use restricted range. And actually for tangent, that would put me in the fourth quadrant. Then you're going to have to fix it and do all this. It's easier just to not type in the negative and then just put the angle where you want it to be. So arctangent of 4 thirds, this is not something you have memorized. This is something you're going to need to use your calculator for. We would do, and I am, let me just check. Yep, I'm in radiance mode. So I'm going to do arctan of 4 thirds. This is just going to give me the reference angle. Okay, That is the angle in the first quadrant. Um, how do you put an angle like that in the second quadrant? So I have 0.927 here. All right, now this is pi right here, so we want to do pi minus that reference angle. Okay, and that will just change depending on what quadrant you're in. Don't try to memorize this stuff, just think through it. So again, I'm going to use my calculator for this. I'm going to do pi minus the answer, so that's accurate, and I get 2.14, and then I will round that. So then my final answer, 5, 2.14, and that's in radians, so you don't want to put a degree sign. And if we had been in degrees, we would have done the problem in degrees, but they did say radians here. Okay, on the next page, it kind of gives you a, a quick um, formula to know what we did. This is just kind of reviewing on what we did. So if you're good at memorizing, memorize this stuff. If not, draw the picture and work it out that way. Okay, so what we're going to do is just a couple of examples. Um, I think I'm going to work out one and three on this video, and then for more practice, two and four on the next video. So this is in x, y coordinates right now. Um, so in order to find the r, I'm going to do this without drawing the picture, although you're more than welcome to do that. We have 3 squared plus negative 5 squared. Okay. This is going to give you the square root of, and that's 34, and that actually doesn't simplify. Now to find your theta, you are going to do arctan of y over x. Again, you can use the picture here. I am going to just do 5 thirds still, even this way. All right, um, And so I'm going to need to use my calculator for that, arctan of 5 thirds. Five thirds, and I get that. And so now let's think about what quadrant we're in. This is in quadrant um, four. Okay, so um, we want to do actually two pi minus. You could use a negative angle here if you wanted, um, and you could also do two pi minus the one point oh three. And if you do that in your calculator, you get five point. So then my final answer would be square root of 34 comma 5.253. There it is now in polar coordinates in radians. Okay, let's do example three and then we'll be done on this video. So here's my r, here's my theta. Again, you could draw a picture like how we did it first or you can use the shortcut that, they, that was given. So um, the x value is going to be your radius times cosine of 7 pi over 6. The nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about what quadrant you're in. If you're using this angle, you can think about what quadrant you're in and if your answer should be positive or negative. So what I mean is by this is cosine of 30 is going to be square root of 3 over 2. Now that is going to be in quadrant um, 3. So um, you don't have to um, draw that out to know that. Okay, so it's going to be negative. So this is kind of like the one we worked before. Negative 2, oh I'm sorry, negative root 3. There we go. And to find the y value, I would have 2 sine of 7 pi over 6. And this is going to give me 2, and then again in quadrant 3 I'm going to have a negative and then that's going to be 1 half so my y value is going to be negative 1 
So my final answer would be negative root 3, negative 1.